Hello and welcome to the Sochka Pavilion here in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. A rainy Saturday afternoon, a perfect evening for wrestling, the EIWA Finals. My name is Jeannie Rader. I am joined by my man, Jonathan Kosek. We've got a phenomenal slate of 10 finals here on deck for you. Kozak, break it down for me. What are we looking at? Yeah, start to finish, 10 finals, going to be incredible. But we start with the heat right away. Luke Stanich versus Brett Unger. And then premier match of the night, number one, Ryan Crookham versus number two, Vito Arujao, a rematch of their match earlier, 133, where Ryan Crookham won that match. What else we got, JD? Yeah, so those aren't just huge for the individuals. They've already qualified for NCAs. But for the team race, we have a very tight team race going into these finals and four head-to-head -head matches between Lehigh and Cornell, 157 and 174 are those other two head-to-head -head matchups between these top two teams. Yeah, looks like we are getting ready to go here at 125. Luke Stanich out of Lehigh in the white and gold. Brett Unger in the red out of Cornell, and we are underway. Stanich gonna be the favorite here on paper, but as we've seen in this tournament, we've seen results get reversed yep. from prior duels. We've seen upsets where lower ranked guys have knocked out higher ranked guys, so anything can happen here yes. in these finals. Stanich ranked number three in the country, was ranked as high as number one, at one point, Unger down there at 18, but we've seen 125 start to finish this year, just been crazy, so we know anything can happen. These two did wrestle earlier in the year in the duel. Stanich came out on top, but it was a tight match. Yeah, both these wrestlers pretty stingy, hard to take down. I expect another close bout here this evening. Yeah, we visited Lehigh for that duel and talking to Coach Evan Henderson, said Luke Stan is really tough in the hand fight. Yep. Unger in on a single leg now, able to pull that left leg in tight. He's putting himself in good position. Stan needs to square up, get in front, keep stuffing that head of Unger. Unger now to the angle. So Stan is switching off to close shin wizard defense. There he slips that leg back out, squares up. I think we're gonna get a stalemate here. As I say that, uh, Unger continuing to work through the position, trying to finish the shot. Anytime you get this deep on Stanich, you gotta try and work through the finish. You're only gonna get limited opportunities. Yeah, the official let him work there for a long time, but wasn't able to progress through the position. And stalemate rightfully called. Yeah, Henderson said hand fighting Stanich is like hand fighting a 141, 149 pounder. He said he's got <laughs> really heavy hands for a 125 pounder. Stanich and Crookham, the dynamic true freshman duo for the Mountain Hawks. Two true freshmen having stellar seasons. Crookham redshirt, redshirt freshman. True. But Stanich, yeah, you're right, he is, is a true freshman. And there was a question whether or not his red shirt would be pulled. He still was under that five match minimum up until really like second or third last uh, event of the year. So now 30 seconds to go in the first. Not a whole lot of action. Unger has been slightly the more aggressive wrestler taking two, three, or four attacks. Sandich really has yet to get to Unger's legs. You see him here working to try and push Unger out of bounds, hopefully get a stall call. Now Sandich to the leg. He's gonna have to capture that far leg. Put Unger on the hip, and he does. Big short time takedown. Wow, for With two Stanich. seconds left. And that is huge, getting that takedown right at the end of the period. Doesn't give Unger a chance to get the escape. 
And that's going to be a hole for Unger to, to dig out of here as the match unfolds. Sanich wins the toss, chooses bottom. Unger can be a little tricky on top, kind of stingy, good with tilts. Something for Sanich to watch out for, but he's felt him previously this season. Yeah, the difference in the duel was that top bottom position. There was no takedowns, but it was Stanich who rode Unger out. Ended up getting a riding time point and an escape point. And an escape point here for Sanich makes a score four to zero. And again, these two in front had him. Unger ding for stalling. It's worth mentioning over in the Big Ten Championships, number one, uh, Matt Ramos, and number two, Drake Ayala, already lost in the quarterfinals of Big Ten. So Stanish could be looking at the number one seed at NCAAs. Huge. Stanish continuing to march forward. He's really been the one controlling the center of the mat this entire match. And Unger has to be careful. He should not just back right out of bounds here. He has been warned for stalling. Unger keeping Stanich at bay with that tricep grab on Stanich's right arm. They go out of bounds, and that and will be a stall. There's a stall call, and a point goes on the board. A large Lehigh crowd here, as we are not too far from Bethlehem. They're liking what they're seeing out of their guys so far. Seeing it up five to zero late in the second. Two right now are locked in that ear-to-ear -ear collar tie. That does it for the second. Stanich still in the driver's seat. And as you said, Stanich was able to pick up a riding time point in the duel. So huge position here for Unger. Obviously, he's going to need a couple takedowns or takedown and back points, so can't waste much time in the bottom position. Yes, yeah, Stanich really good with his forward pressure, puts a lot of pressure on the shoulders, elbows of his opponent. You know, drops down with that head, looks to attack the elbow, making it difficult, and now has Unger flattened out. Stanich really likes that tight waist. Head lever, right side tight waist, left side head lever. Then mm -hmm. he'll switch it off to a barb. As you mentioned, the team race really has come down to Cornell, Lehigh. Cornell in the lead by about 12 points. So a win here for Stanish would be big for the team race. There's that right side tight waist, left side head lover. I was talking about as Stanich approaches a minute of riding time. Here's stall calls from both sides. You got the Cornell side saying he's got to come off to the side. You got the Lehigh crowd saying he's got to come up. Looks like the referee's just gonna let this play out. Stanich is working hard here, really working that left arm of Unger. And this is tough. 
college D1 ride stuff here out of the true freshman standage yeah. to close out this match. Yeah, really impressive match for Luke Standage. Kind of widened the gap just a little bit over Brett Unger and true freshman EIWA champion. Luke Standage gets the six to nothing win. In impressive fashion, was able to get a takedown this time. Really, he got a takedown, an escape, and a ride out. Can't ask for much more out of your top seed here. So we're gonna take a look at the action from that match. I believe this is that first period takedown right on the edge and this really swung momentum in Stanich's favor and from that moment on, just kind of controlled where the match took place, controlled the pressure and controlling six to nothing win for Luke Stanich. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back with 133 pounds. We are back, no break, right to the action. This is the match that we've all been waiting for. Number one, Ryan Crookham. Number two, Vito Rouge out of the rematch. And right away, classic Vito, palm in that forehead. So he likes to, you see those quick twitches for fakes. Really here, this is kind of a battle of the dynamic offense of Vito Ruchow versus yeah. the incredibly stingy defense of Ryan Crookham. Yeah, Crookham's so dangerous when guys are in on his leg. It's almost like he, he prefers that rather than initiating his own offense. Really comfortable with someone in on his leg. The classic unconventional setup of I let you into my leg because that's right where I want you so I can set up my double leg. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Ruchow hasn't been the guy that we saw win an NCAA title last year, win a world championship, been dealing with some injury, hasn't wrestled with the same power or the same sense of urgency that you know sometimes we see out of him. Vito looking calm, cool, and collected here, going with kind of a higher stance, and both guys gonna get worn for hands to the face. And I expect to see a more tactical Arujao in this match, really wanting to pick his spots. The first match they wrestled, he was in a leg six, seven times, and was only able to convert one of those. And conversely, Crookham scored off of two of Arujao's attacks. Arm drag, double leg, Vito Arujao drags the toes, gets the takedown, but we're gonna get a brick we're gonna see from a the Lehigh corner. They're gonna, Lehigh corner is saying Crookham hit the wood before Vito collected the legs and sat him on the hip. Yep. Yeah, we'll see if we can take a look at it as they do as well, but I, you know, we can't see it from where we're at. That part of the hardwood is hidden from us, but. It sounded like he hit the hardwood. Yeah, yeah, and you know, Lehigh coach is right there, but did Vito have both legs captured before Crookham's hand hit out of bounds. And it should be noted, the official who made the call on the mat is not the one that has the final call here for these reviews. Yeah, so we can see, it's really close. We just gotta look at the replay. Kind of happened simultaneously. Call on the mat was three don't think they're gonna overturn it. And there it is. Call stands. And that's how you take down Ryan Crookham. You gotta capture both legs at one time. You can't just go ex single leg, extended finish.
Crookham up to his feet off the whistle. Big Matt return to Ruchow, but Crookham able to change over, get his hips out and escape. And it is worth mentioning, Vito did get the first takedown in their first match. Crookham darting in, head to the and outside. Puts Vito on the mat for the takedown. Wow. What a response. And Vito responds with the Grammy and the this match living up to the hype so far, and we're only two minutes in. A big smile from Mike Gray. In the corner, he's loving it. So five to four, Arujao in the lead. We haven't seen Vito too committed to riding yet this tournament. And there, Krukum gets the escape. Arujao just with 15 seconds of riding time, all tied up at five. And Vito, even in his most dominant run, NCAA's World Championships, he's not a guy who's gonna beat everybody 10 to zero or two to zero like that. He'll give up a takedown, mm -hmm. be perfectly and finally. He doesn't mind mixing it up because he feels confident. If we're going exchange and takedown for takedown, I'm gonna win that battle. Yeah. But how big was that takedown for Crookham to come back after getting taken down early? Now levels the, levels the score in the first period here. And after three minutes, tied at five. Crookham wants to toss, he chooses to go down right away. Spiral ride for Vito off of Crookham's quad pod. Another big mat return for Rusha as they go out of bounds. 31 seconds of riding time for Vito. Crookham up to his feet, switch, and he's out. So Ryan Crookham in the lead, six to five now. 1.30 to go in the second. And really the, the story with Vito is don't, don't blink. Kind of lull you to sleep. But as I say that, Crookham in on a single leg. Yeah, good defense right here from Arujao. Has Crookham completely flattened out. Crookham, though, good lock around the right leg of Arujao, so he's going to hold on for a stalemate. You can feel the tension yeah. in this arena right now. All eyes here on mat one. Fans on the edge of their seats. They know how much is at stake here. Vito picking up the hand movement. Yep. Warning for hands to the face. And I believe the official said both guys. Okay. So one more for either wrestler, a point will go on the board. any committed attacks at the end of this period. Under 15 seconds to go now. Arusha pursuing Crookham. Now on the edge of 10 seconds. Good circle by Crookham. If he gets shot out there, he risks giving up a stall. Arm jack double on the edge of short time. No. Woo. So Vito's choice going into the third. Neither wrestler weren't for stalling, correct? Correct. Hands to the face will be the thing to watch. Mm -hmm. 
Up and away, Vito threatening whoo, off of the stand-up. Here we go, comes down to this. Third period, 6-6, six, six. riding time not a factor as of right now. And how many times has Vito gotten to Crookham's leg? Just that initial takedown? And then the one on the edge the one as on time the edge, was yeah. expiring. So we have seen Vito pick his shots a little bit more here. Again, Arujo taking Crookham to the edge. Crookham yeah, needs to circle in, that might be here. a stall. Action no action call. the call. Okay. The crowd's asking for a stall, but just the action. A minute 11 to go here. Under 50 seconds to go now. Are we gonna see a takedown here in the final 30 seconds or are we going to overtime? And we got Shot Crookham. Crookham. He's got the bottom leg took. Danger count, just one though. He's got both He's legs got both legs. Legs. He's got the takedown. He's got the takedown, 20 seconds to go. He's got a stall to give. Yes, he does. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. Vito holding that left leg. Left knee. And a lot and, of pain. Looked like now, he, he might have shocked himself a little bit. Able to stand up on a, under his own accord. Don't like to see this, especially in a match, you know, as good as the one that we just saw. You see the I replay think it might here. Actually, be ankle, not knee. No, it is knee. They're definitely taking a look at the the left knee of Vito Arujo. Yeah, you see the replay, and a lot of times when it is a knee, there isn't there isn't anything. Really that crazy that you see, maybe just a little tweak here or there, but Vito definitely in some pain, and Crookham has choice now. That's the big, you know, big thing here. Crookham gonna choose down, and Vito gonna let him up, so another point goes on the board. That's pretty much the match, up by four points now. Wow. Vito gonna be have to be looking feet to back with just 14 to go. Vito Rusha sprinting at Crookham. Headgear comes off. They're going to let them finish this, though. Just three seconds now. That's the match right there. Ryan Crookham is wow. going to do it. Kind of see the frustration here. And there's the stall call. Ryan Crookham with a flex to the crowd. Arushao gets up, but he is limping, favoring that left knee. Big win for Ryan Crookham. He stays undefeated on the year. Takes out Vito Arushao for the second time of the year. Crazy match, lived up to the hype. Here's another look at the action from that match. There's that first takedown for Crookham. <laughs> Reversal for Arujao. Probably the best flurry of the match. From the get-go. Tip your hat to both guys, a phenomenal match. Crookham now moves to 2-0 and against Vito Arujao. Yeah. And will likely have the number one seed at NCAAs. Yeah, either him or Dayton Fix. You know, that's really the question now. But, you know, you see, you see Crookham beat Vito, the defending national champion, two times, and you, you, know, you probably think, how can you not give Crookham the number one seed? 
We're going to take a quick break here before our 141-pound championship. See you soon. back we are getting ready to go here at 141 pounds We've got Josh Coderhan out of Navy versus Dylan Chapel out of Bucknell underway 141 pound finals Dylan Chapel been on quite the run here in his home gym took out Vince Cornella in sudden victory yesterday in the quarterfinals then Malik Hines in the semifinals this morning Coderhan, a pinner, he likes to work from this front head cow catcher position. Also very good with cradles. Yeah, Chapel started the year up at 149, kind of struggled, didn't have maybe the success that he hoped for, and then drops down to 141, and you see now in the finals here, probably the right decision for him. Yeah. Chapel semi, really unique situation. He got the pin call 
on the mat, but then Hines was hurt before the pin, so they took it back. Then he had to win last second takedown. Yeah, unfortunately, too, there was an entry in his quarterfinal as well. Vince Cornella of Cornell was injured, did not continue after that match. Been really impressed with Chapel's defense. He's been able to extend positions, scramble through, and you know, really when guys are in on his legs, is, is pretty dangerous. Able to pass legs, able to counter, work for stalemates when he's in tricky positions. Neither wrestler really able to gain an advantage here in the hand fight. Under 30 seconds to go now, and Chapel gets to the leg. He pulls single. Coderant in good position to defend here. He's gonna try and push back and break that lock Chapel has around his left leg before he's able to come behind. 13 to work here, and the official's gonna put him back on their feet, stalemate. Does it for the first. No points on the board. Coderhan wins the toss with the first to Chapel. He's gonna go underneath. Nice escape there by Chapel. Coderhan was threatening with that suck back. Chapel stayed strong in the sit position until he was able to get his hips out and earn his escape. Chapel has been in close matches this whole weekend. One four to two in round one, four to one, eight to seven. Coderhan, on the other hand, his closest match, five to nothing. Yeah, Coderhan, your top seed here for a reason. Showcasing it right now with that double leg from space. Nice Quick hook of the legs for the finish. Yeah, I mentioned. Chapel really good at extending positions, but that's one way that you keep a guy from extending position. Clean double leg, finish fast. Don't even give them opportunity to scramble through. Standing Granby for Chapel. Here's a position to escape, but Coderhan locks up a cradle. He's good here. Plenty of time to work, 30 seconds. Coderhan's going to want to try and take Chapel over his head. Just like that. Takes it over. Back points, if not more. It's going to be hard to get that left Five shoulder seconds. down here. Four seconds to go. He's getting close, though. Saved by the whistle. Big second period for Josh Coderhan. He opens this up. Now up seven to one and with decision, he will go down. Take 
Chapel you think is gonna try and ride for 17 seconds, maybe look for a turn and then cut him. Yeah, he needs to home run now. Down 7-1 in the third period. He needs big points. He needs it quick. Coder Hand does earn his escape before riding time is out, but if you're Chapel, you're actually probably not too worried about that because you need to get on top anyways. Yep. There's that cow catcher I was talking about in the first period, but Coder Hand abandons it. May Chapel feel it. Had him bail out of the position, which allowed him to just come behind for the takedown. Yeah, really at the college level, you don't see someone threaten with that cow catcher position that potently, right? right. You know, it's usually you see it in middle school, high school, but Coderhan is so effective with it. And just like there, he doesn't always use it to get the cow catcher, but sometimes just to get the take time. Yeah. Caution, Coder Hand. Suck back at 10 for Cutter Hand. Chapel feels it, hip pies out. So we'll see what he has in his bag of tricks with 20 seconds to go. Three, two, one, Josh Cutter Hand. EIWA champion, dominant 12 to two performance. Yeah, start to finish, no doubt. Josh Coderham proved to be the best guy in this bracket. Really opened up the match with that cradle at the end of the second period, but never in danger. Here we'll see the first takedown, that clean double and the quick finish from Coderham. Big map returns. And there's the cradle. Locked it up. And he really had to work for this. And I kept his lock for a long time, but then when he felt it, he took it over, almost got the fall, but in the end came away with the major decision win. First place here. EIWA Championships. Now we're moving up to 149 pounds, where we will see Cornell's Ethan Fernandez. He's the number one seed. And his opponent, Jack Crook, the number six seed out of Harvard, making a run to the finals. And we'll see if he can keep the magic going here against top seeded Fernandez. Some Ivy on Ivy crime here in the finals. This is the last year the Ivy Leagues will be wrestling in the IWAs. And nice high crotch to a double for Fernandez. Picks Crook up, puts him down, textbook. Yeah, these two wrestled in January. Ethan Fernandez came out on top 11 to 7. Jack Crook, the twin brother of Tom Crook, 141 for Virginia Tech. Crook, 
once again back up to his feet. Fernandez bringing him down with that two on one. Roll through tilt for Fernandez. Crook able to roll all the way through to avoid any backs. Crook going right back to the well. This time he's gonna get backs. He's got four locked up. Four near fall for Fernandez as the two go out of bounds. up to his feet. Fernandez has been able to bring him down each time and now he's hit for stalling. Still trying to return Crook and we're gonna get illegal cutback. Fernandez left both feet. So I'm bringing that right foot in between and then as soon as he left, that left foot, the official was waiting and ready for it. If you're the returning wrestler, you have to keep one foot on the mat at all times. So they're explaining that to him, make, kind of making sure he doesn't do it again. Fernandez in the driver's seat here, seven to one, minute 26 riding time and building. This time, Fernandez opts to just cut Crook when he gets to his feet. Probably a wise decision. Takedown for Crook would be huge here, getting himself back in the match. Down by five, still early. Fernandez putting a couple attacks together. Now big finish to extend his lead to eight points. Ethan Fernandez already in bonus point territory here with 30 seconds remaining in the first period. Yeah, the perfect first period for Fernandez up to this point. Fernandez trying to trip Crook back down to the mat and he will do so successfully. So he's gonna finish this period in the top position and up by eight points with over two minutes of riding time. Yeah, two takedowns, a turn, and a whole bunch of riding time. That's the type of first period that'll win you a match for sure, but. You probably could have done without the illegal yeah. cutback. <laughs> yeah. And the stall warning, but. Now we're, now we're just nitpicking. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Crook just gonna cut Fernandez. Re-attack Fernandez. Cook actually to an angle here. Fernandez pulling himself in though. Trying to climb up the body of Crook. Crook almost looking for a high flyer. Now goes somersault defense. But Fernandez holds on for the finish and immediately driving Crook, Crook flat. Impressive stuff for Ethan Fernandez. He was a 133 pounder last year. Obviously behind Arujao. Cornella at 141, so moves all the way up to 49 and putting together a great year. Yeah, you can tell Fernandez isn't the biggest 149 pounder out there, but. Mm -hmm. 
Likely the most skilled out here in the EIWA tournament. Obviously number one seed for a reason and showing why here in the finals. Yeah, four automatic qualifying spots for the NCAA tournament here. Time winding down in the second period. We'll go into the third. Fernandez up 14 to three. And if you're Coach Gray, really probably want Fernandez to push forward the tech fall here. We mentioned really tight team race. Cornell in the lead by Three and a half points right now. Lehigh does have a wrestler going for third place over on mat three. But bonus points. Yeah, that 197 pound match looms large. Michael Beard versus yeah. Jacob Cardenas. Could come all the way down to heavyweight where Lehigh has big man Nate Taylor. Good mat return by Ethan Fernandez. Nice work driving Crook all the way flat. Crook to his credit, still hustling here. Immediately back up to his feet. Yeah, Crook is working, but you know, Fernandez, three minutes of riding time, couple takedowns. Really making it tough for Crook to get anything going. going to see Fernandez push for that tech fall. He's going to go optional start. Going to need two takedowns up by essentially 11 at this point. There's a nice high crotch. Captures both legs. And yep, immediately goes to the cut. One more takedown will do it. Crook slowing Fernandez down with a two on one. And as I say that, Fernandez, opposite side single leg. Crook on rubber knee defense, so they will stop it for potentially dangerous. Yeah, Fernandez corner really urging him on. Won that tech fall. Fernandez trying here with 15 seconds to go to get this last takedown. There's a nice double leg, seven seconds. There it is. And Mike Gray loves it. Loves the effort and the hustle out of his guy, Ethan Fernandez, who went out and got a bonus point for him. Yeah, and as a coach, you know, that's what you love to see. Fernandez didn't need it, didn't need the, the takedown for the win personally, but needed the takedown for the team. And he gets it, and you know, that's what you, you love to see if you're his coach, you're his teammate, putting that extra effort in to get that extra half point for the team. There you see that tilt that really blew things open in the first period. Fernandez 
really crisp, clean leg attacks. And here's the final takedown that sealed the deal for the tech fall. So Ethan Fernandez, our 149 pound champ. We're gonna take a short break. They're gonna take a break here in the arena, present some awards. So we'll be back with you in just a minute.
we are back with you, getting ready for 157 pounds, where we'll see Meyer Shapiro out of Cornell take on Max Brignola out of Lehigh. Meyer coming out early, looking to attack. Didn't get his first one deeper on the second attack here. In really good position to finish. Just has to get a knee down. There he does it. Meyer Shapiro, man, he's really, seems like he's putting things together. Very dangerous offensively. But over these last two months, he's been on a really good run. Beat Brock Mahler, beat Ed Scott. Has looked dominant here in Lewisburg this weekend. Yeah, these two wrestled in January. Actually, a closer match. It was eight to two, but Brignola was in on the winning takedown late in the third period, but Shapiro was able to scramble through it, get a takedown of his own. Shapiro, one of the most talked about young guys, along with Ryan Crookham in NCAA wrestling this year. A lot of folks out there think he could potentially win this 157 pound weight class in Kansas City. Yeah, well, after the summer that he had, you know, making the U-20 world team and then winning world gold, I mean, bringing with him so much hype. And then he beats Bryce Andonian at CKLV, but, but drops two matches to Cardenas and, and Trevor Chumbly. So then you're kind of like thinking, okay, maybe we should temper our expectations, but kind of feel like they're coming back up in the postseason here. Yeah, Roach and State title will likely have to go through a Big Ten, 157-pounder. Levi Haynes, the top dog over there right now. We'll see how that tournament plays out. Those semifinals uh, should be starting right about the conclusion mm -hmm. of these finals here. So you can hop on over to the Big Ten Network and check those out. The finals will be tomorrow. Shapiro, a lot of different ways to score. You see him attack, ankle pick, you see ducks, you see wrist snaps. He yeah. really likes the flash. He likes, he likes making a highlight or two for sure. Our social media video guys are big fans yes. of Meyer Shapiro. Shapiro Pyro wins choice. the top. Yep, Shapiro wins the toss off to go down right away. Nice mat return by Bignola. Slips the right boot in, but switch from Shapiro. And reversal for Meyer Shapiro. Hops up to the tight waist, chop, flattens Brignola out. Cradle, Meyer Shapiro. He can either hop over or try and get hip to hip and take Brignola back. Doesn't have that arm trapped that can be difficult to take over. Shapiro approaching a minute riding time as Brignola gets up to his feet. And 
Shapiro walked Brignola out of bounds. So the two will restart with 26 seconds to go. Shapiro did hit the minute of riding time mark. Brignola will have choice in the third, so these next 26 seconds, pretty important for him. He wants to stay in this match. Needs an escape here. And you see the count starting as Shapiro drops down to the ankle. Brignola comes back up to his feet, so the count stops. And it starts back again as the two go back to the mat. Brignola keeping his hand in bounds Very to earn smart. the stall call. Savvy move there from Brignola. Knew he wasn't going to get the escape, so might as well get a stall. Lat whip attempt there late from Brignola, but Shapiro holds on. He'll trade the one stall call for the period right out in a minute 26 of riding time. So Shapiro leading five to one, does hold that riding time. So Brignola needs an escape, needs a takedown, and needs to eliminate that riding time. Good tight waist chop there from Shapiro. Shallow boot on the right side. Switch attempt for Brignola. And there he gets away. Gets away, but not before giving up two minutes and two seconds total of riding time across the second and third. Yeah, so he's going to need to push the pace here. He does have that stall call. So and just a couple seconds, riding time will be locked, but if he can pick up a stall and a takedown. Mm -hmm. Pyro trying to come behind. Brignola staying in front and keeping him at bay with that left side tricep grip. Forty seconds to go now. Brignola really needed to pick up his pace here. Shapiro in control. Essentially up by four. Nice underhook work by Shapiro. That's where you want to be if you're him. Get to a control tie. Stay engaged in the hand fight. Don't just back away, but get to a control tie. Just like that, though. Now we're interesting with 18 seconds to go. Stall call on Shapiro. Front headlock position. Shapiro should wait here for the last six seconds. And that's yeah. what he will do. Yeah, good match there for Shapiro. Wasn't able to open it up, but proof he was the better wrestler from start to finish. And he's he's fired up. He likes to celebrate. <laughs> and true freshman winning his first and will be his only EIWA title moving to the <laughs> Ivy League tournament next year. Impressive tournament for Shapiro. Big expectations leading into the NCAA tournament. Here we'll take a look at some of the highlights. There's that first single leg. Really nice movement. Shapiro really good at moving laterally. Really athletic. And there is the reversal as well. Takedown reversal built up. A lot of riding time. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with our 165 pound final.
Welcome back. We are getting ready for 165 pounds now, where we'll see Julian Ramirez take on Andrew Cerniglia. Julian Ramirez ranked number three in the country. Andrew Cerniglia ranked number 20. Cerniglia, a native of here in Pennsylvania, was a Notre Dame Green Palm prospect, uh, really highly touted recruit. Started his career at 157 pounds, and the story behind him, it's always rumored he was cutting maybe a little too much weight. Bumped up to 165 this year, and uh, now in the IWA Finals, I think you can say that was the right decision. Yeah, for sure. Ramirez, a super explosive wrestler.
Ramirez, the top there. seed here. Cerniglia, the number three seed, took out number two seed, Casella, in the semis. Reattack from Cerniglia. He's in pretty deep, but he's got a ways to go before he's going to be able to finish on Ramirez. Soniglia takes it down to the mat. Ramirez tries to spin around. Soniglia stays with it. Now Ramirez locked in the crotch. He's going to try and get that left foot back. Now Soniglia slipping his head underneath. Nice scramble here. And Ramirez in position to score. Ramirez needs to get wrist control so he can break that lock and get his left foot back. There it is, the takedown. Senegla is still holding on to the foot. Brick and comes out for Navy. I'm not sure why. He might Sinigli be challenging had that takedown. the foot, but that was still looked like takedown criteria to me. So they're, they're gonna take a look at this independent review in the finals here. So Ramirez has the foot hooked in control. He was talking to the official. Nigla never did let go of the leg. But I think that's a takedown. But I'm also not an official. Yeah. Calling the mat does stand. Score will remain 3-0. Ramirez appears to be okay. So Nigla trying to put Ramirez in a little bit of danger. Ramirez slipping off to the side, and now it's going to be looking to get back near fall. It's going to get at least two here. Now official holding four. Oh, no. Still... Now they're no. challenging the... No near fall? No near fall. So they're gonna be challenging the near fall. Must have just been separate one counts. Definitely saw a few swipes there. But just like that, we go back to the review board. And that's why you gotta be careful when you're in the bottom position, looking for a defensive fall, putting the bottom guy in danger. If he slips off to the side, all of a sudden you are in near you're, fall criteria. Yeah, you're putting yourself in a little bit of danger there. There you see on your screen at home. As I'm looking at it again, I think the call on the match is going to stand here. So Niglia did a good job kind of arching up, getting his hands on the mat and getting out of that near fall criteria. And call does stand. Sir Niglia does earn the escape. So three to one, Ramirez in the lead. We go under a minute to go in the first period. So both teams lost their challenge, but they do still each have a challenge. So both teams getting their challenge bricks back. 
Now Cerniglia did have, did fire off that attack and Ramirez able to score off of it. So we see maybe Cerniglia thinks once or twice before attacking again, or if he gets right back to it. Brings the first period to a close. Ramirez with the takedown up three to one. So Niglia wins the toss, defers to Ramirez who will take bottom. coming up to his feet, but Cerniglia pinching the left oh. foot, putting Ramirez in danger. Ramirez able to roll off of his back though. Now Cerniglia going tight waist. Left side claw. What, trying to go back to that well. This time he gives up the reversal though. And we're gonna stop for blood time coming from the nose of Cerniglia. Yeah, and you mentioned you know early in the match how powerful Ramirez is and really showed off there in that position. Maybe a, a less powerful wrestler would have got caught, but in that situation worked out in his favor, able to get the reversal. up to his feet off of the whistle. Ramirez pushes him away. We are back on our feet with a little over a minute to go in the second. Slowing down a little bit as these two are locked in collar ties. <laughs> Ramirez finally able to get Swinigli off of his head. And this is where Ramirez likes to work. A little bit from space, you'll see him go pop double. <laughs> nice little friendly uh, fire <laughs> there at the end of the period. Yeah, I think uh, Ramirez was Gonna let the whistle blow, relax for a second dose, and he kind of came at him. He said, Come at me, bro. <laughs> so Niglia goes down, but Ramirez says, Hey, let's just, let's just go on our feet here. Yeah, interesting tactic. You know, this isn't, uh, he's not necessarily working for bonus here. This is a two point match. But Sir Nick, excuse me, Ramirez confident in his abilities on the feet. He really? does have the only takedown of this match. But really, we haven't seen him get to Cerniglia's legs yet. He scored off of Cerniglia's shot. A 
approaching the one minute mark. Knee pull single for Suniglia, good defense. Good sprawl from Ramirez. Suniglia comes up into double unders. Can he use this? Ramirez goes double overs for some reason. Oh. <laughs> they go out of bounds. And he actually almost rolled into it, but they go out of bounds. No takedown either way. Probably gave Mike Gray a heart attack there for a second. Yeah, that takes a little guts there. You know, you're up by two. You don't need to go for that, but I like it. You know, why not? Why not? Because you can throw yourself to your back when you're <laughs> winning in the conference finals. That's why not. Yeah. Well, you're out of bounds, you know, just for fun. Yeah, Ramirez playing a little bit with fire here. He's controlled this match, but one takedown for Cerniglia will put him ahead. Stall warning on Ramirez. He can give up one more though. Ramirez glancing at the clock. Soniglia now picking up his sprint. Ramirez locking up that collar tie. Soniglia firing off a shot, and that's going to do it. Julian Ramirez off that first period takedown. Gets the 5-3 to three victory. Start to finish. Number one seeded, and he comes out on top here. Wins the EIWA title. Cerniglia taking second. Good run for him. And here we see that first takedown. It was reviewed and upheld. And this is the difference in the match here for Julian Ramirez. He got the lead, and there was the one little dangerous position, almost gave up back points. And then able to get the reversal. So Julian Ramirez, our winner at 165 pounds. And we're gonna stay here, move up to 174 pounds, where we'll see Ben Pazook from Army take on Lennox Wolak from Columbia. And with that win, Cornell taking a pretty controlling lead in the team race, 163 and a half to 149 and a half. I believe that's a 14 point lead. Here at 174 pounds, kind of see clashing styles. Pazook, a little more defensive, picks his spots. Lennox Wolak kind of lets it fly. Yeah, Wolak, one of the more fun competitors to watch here at the AWA tournament. Pazook, one of the better nicknames here at the AWA tournament. Ben Pazooka, yep. as I like to call him. You know, because he wrestles for Army. That's right. <laughs> Pazook played around with wrestling 184 this year, started there and then dropped down to 174. And you can see he might have a little bit of a size advantage here. Pazook first shot of the match from the outside. Wolak bringing him in the front head. Pazook the four seed, Wolak the three seed. Top seeded Canigliero fell in the quarterfinals to number eight seed Benny Baker. They got a rematch going on for third and fourth. Wolak, impressive win. Nice low single for Pazook. Taking out the trash, finish. No points yet. Nice work here from Wolak, if he can stay out of danger. 
Ben's gonna have to keep coming around, hook that bottom leg, and pop his head out. Good defense from Wolak. Pazuk was definitely in good position to finish that shot before he was able to lock in the crotch, prevent the takedown. Wolak working on the edge. Action called as the two go out of bounds. Straight on, double from Bazook and Wolak throws him by with a lat drop. Again, action call as the two wrestlers go out of bounds. Yeah, you see Wolak pretty comfortable in upper body positions. Really likes his inside trip. Yeah, he hit that twice in his semifinal and was successful both times. One time he even picked up back points off of it as well. Some hand mixer on the edge. Oh, he might have kept those toes <laughs> Almost. in. Two wrestled in January. Woolak came out on top in that match, 10 to seven. This one, it's a little more low, lower scoring here so far. These two guys cannot stay in bounds. Yeah. Not that one guy's playing the edge, just a lot of action. No points. There's a nice club single from Pazook. Again, good defense from Wolak. Can he arm drag and score this takedown in three seconds? No, Bazook squares up. So we will go into the second period still scoreless. Yeah, story of that first period, Pazook on the attack, but unable to crack the code of Wolak's defense. Seems pretty tricky to finish on. Going to the second period, Wolak on top, Pazook in the down position. Kazook up, cuts and turns, and first points of the bout go to Pazook. Club single again from Pazook. Working on the edge. Nice snap, looking to come behind. Again, the two go out of bounds. Straight on shot for Pazook. Wolak. Pressure in with the defense though, so stalemate earned by Wolak. Yeah. 
pretty similar to the first period. A lot of shots for Pazook and their first stall call against Wolak. And now trading stall calls. Yep, each guy with a warning now. And Coach Ward having a word with the officials, but Wolak did lock up front head and walked Pazook out of bounds. With the new rules and call dressing, you gotta make an attempt to circle in there. Yeah. So Coach Ward getting an official warning <laughs> for questioning the official. How many questions can you ask an official? I don't know. Ask an official. Yeah. It's a question for an official. There you go. Wolak up to his feet, and there's the escape to tie the bout at one. Pazook coming in, and Whoa. again, Wolak going to throw him all the way into the other mat. And we've seen Pazook, you know, come forward taking shots, but you know, hasn't been that close to finishing. Wolak's defense been pretty strong here. Yeah, again, Wolak catches him coming in. Come on, Ben! Pazook's got to be careful. Can't back out of bounds here. Pazook cannot back out of bounds here. Stalemate the call. Ward, Coach Ward telling Pazook to go back to his club single that he's hit several times this match. And he does, left hand club, right hand single. Good he's hips from Wolak though. There's that inside trip. To go out of bounds. Now Wolak coming single. Wolak picking up the pace a little bit. He wants the stall here. Not gonna get it, action the call. And there you see Wolak kinda uses the shot to set up the inside trip there. Yep, here's a shot from Pazook. And back again where these two have spent so much time with Wolak in this front headlock position. There's a stall on Pazook. Wow. That will give Wolak the lead. With 40 seconds to go. And you, you feel for, for the Army crowd here complaining about the stall because they feel like their guy is taking the more yep. shots. But you got to know if you're Pazook that you've been warned and you can't back out of bounds there. You got to make an attempt to circle in. Just like Wolak did right there, planted his foot, pivoted. Under 15 now. Pazook trying to peek out one way, then the other. He's got time for one more attack. Wolak gonna get the takedown to seal it. And he's fired up. Wolak is your winner here at 174 pounds. Tightly contested match. Maybe a little controversial with the stall calls, but in the end, well, that comes out on top. Yeah, you, probably one of the more action-packed 
two to one, no takedown, decided yeah. on stalling matches you will see in college wrestling. Yeah, you know, a lot of the action happened on the edge of the mat. We didn't see a ton of score, but both of those guys, they, they were trying to score throughout the seven minutes of that bout for sure. So we are gonna take a quick break and they might be moving to awards. So we'll be back with 184 pounds in just a minute.
And welcome back as we are getting ready to get our 184 pound finals underway here. We'll see Nate Dugan out of Princeton take on Aaron Azirov out of Columbia. Underway here, 184 pounds. Dugan in the white and orange. Azirov in that white and baby blue. Azirov moved to 3 and 0 on the year against Chris Foka in the semifinals. Outside double from Azirov. Good sprawl from Dugan. So we will end it in a stalemate. Single leg knee pull from Azirov. It's going to come up right side underhook. Dugan, nice shot. That's his go-to shot right there, that kind of step in high crotch to the right leg of his opponent. No takedown yet, he's got both legs trapped though. Gotta get that right arm out or, or put the zero in danger. Still no takedown, that right arm is trapped in between the legs of Azirov. Yeah, really goofy position here for Azirov. Then an hour more in a standard single leg type finish where Dugan's gonna want to hook that bottom leg. Now pop his head out. Now he's looking to put his ear off in danger. Now pops his head out. Again, though, his right arm is trapped <laughs> yeah. in between the legs. Wow. So Dugan not able to convert that to a takedown. 
Yeah, felt like he was defending for, what, at least a minute? Yeah. It's not a position you see too often. Really surprised Aziroff was able to keep that arm trap for as long as he did. Guys fires off an attack here late in the first period, tries to sneak one in before the buzzer. No, they will not. Both guys content to go into the period. Number two tied at zero. Dugan wins the toss, he defers, and Azirov chooses bottom. Azirov currently ranked number 19 in the country. Dugan, number 22. But these two did wrestle in January, and Dugan came out on top. Oh, and nice reversal. Kind of the old school wing down, step over. Mm -hmm. Fell right into that left boot, too. It's keeping Dugan completely flattened out right now. Dugan's got to crawl forward or shift this position here to free his left leg. Right now, just laying flat. And while Zero might not necessarily be working for a turn, he has the visual appearance of being active. Yeah. So that'll earn him a stall call. Yeah, and Aziroff, you know, you just describe his style, not flashy, but just a worker, always working, always moving, always putting pressure, coming forward. And over seven minutes, that can really wear on an opponent. Still Dugan lying on the mat. He's gonna get dinged again here. No, we're gonna stalemate. go stalemate. Chop to claw to half, right boot in for Zirov. Right back into the same position, only difference is it's the right boot in instead of the left boot in. Now, Zirov goes left boot. gonna end this period on top, and now it's Dugan's choice going into third. Probably choose neutral? Have to. Yep. Single leg for Dugan. Zero hopping off to the side, and now he's in on the legs. Switches off to the double, picks up the takedown. And again has Dugan flattened out. And there's a stall on Dugan, so another point for a zero. Of yeah, quick stall call, but you know, can't can't say you disagree with it. Flat on his belly, really not working to improve. 
They go out of bounds. Zero six to nothing lead. Over two minutes of riding time. Riding time locked up. And Dugan, you know, he spent two minutes under. Hasn't really been that close to getting an escape. Yeah, and this isn't what you want to see if you're a Princeton fan. Gets chopped back down, boot slips right in. Mm -hmm. This Dugan goes back to his belly. And a really impressive tournament for a zero off. You know, beats Chris Foca for the third time. He's 45 seconds away from winning here and flipping a result from earlier in the season against Dugan. Escape for Dugan late. 30 seconds to go. Does he have a sink to throw at his ear off? We'll find out here. Goes back to that shot. This time he's going to get it. He's got to cut him. So six to four. Seven to four, technically, with, with riding, riding time. time. So take down right out. No, eight to four. Seven four at the escape, eight to four. So he still has to go feet to back. Seraph has not been warned. Step in single for Dugan. Out of bounds. Looked like he might have been able to drag the toes, but that pretty much does it. There will be a stall, but one second left. So Zeroff is your winner, eight to four. It's a little celebration. Pulls out the bow on him. And like I said, impressive tournament for Aaron Zeroff. Coming out. EIWA champion, and I think he's proven to be an All-American threat here at 184 pounds. There's the reversal, and that really swung the momentum, getting that reversal right into a really hard ride for a zero off. And then just kind of slow and steady, coming forward, keeping the pressure on, getting that counter takedown in the third, and that all but sealed the deal. Dugan did get that takedown in the third, but there's Zeroff firing off the shot. And now we're gonna move to a 197 pound final. And this could be one of the best of the night here. Rematch, last year's final between Jacob Cardenas, Michael Beard. Michael Beard has been very impressive this year. Jump levels, it seems like. One loss on the year. Michael Beard, 22 and one record coming into this tournament. 21 wins by bonus point, including a major decision win in the duel over Jacob Cardenas. Ready to go here. A showdown of all Americans. Michael Beard out of Lehigh. Jacob Cardenas out of Cornell. We are underway. This is definitely one of the finals we both had circled as our final to watch. Cardenas to the left leg of Beard. Beard pulling him back down to the mat with that close shin wizard. Cardenas doing a good job of elevating it back up in the air. You see Beard wants to bring it back down to the mat. Cardenas wants to keep it up and he is and he's able to finish to get out to an early lead. Good start for Cardenas. 
I mentioned Michael Beard. All but one match was bonus, and I believe I mentioned he had a major decision. It was just a regular decision against Cardenas. 10 to three, one point shy of that bonus. Cornell, believe, has the team title locked up. They are ahead 15 points over Lehigh. Single leg from the outside from Cardenas. Stalemate. Haven't seen Beard able to get to Cardenas' legs just yet. That's Beard's, that's Beard's attack right there. Really good with his re-attacks. Getting to the angle. Winding down in the first. The takedown for Cardenas, the difference at this point in the match. will take a three to one lead into the second. Cardenas working up to quad pod, knee slide, stand up. Beard dropping down to the right ankle to bring Cardenas back down to the mat successfully. Again, Cardenas looking knee slide, stand up. And again, Car excuse me, Beard able to bring him back down to the mat. Cardenas hooking that left leg of Beard yeah. with his left toe, now lets it go. And Beard doing a good job really committing to this ride, building riding time. If he can get his riding time up over a minute, earn a quick escape in the third, that'll essentially tie the match. He's got that right foot trapped. Potentially dangerous, the call. 
Interesting, <laughs> potentially dangerous, but you don't see that one too often. Not exactly sure what was dangerous, but I digress. They will restart. So 47 seconds to go. Beard, riding time, minute, one second. Cardenas not able to use the restart to his advantage. Gets flattened back out. Now Cardenas working a bar on the left side, and Cardenas limp arms out of it. Stalling on Cardenas. And really good work here for Beard. Staying disciplined for the ride. And he's just 15 seconds away from riding this whole second period out. And that'll do it. So he's got a 48 second cushion here. Needs to get out in 48 seconds to hold that minute riding time advantage. Cardenas, we'll see if he looks to put on a similar ride as Beard was able to do in the second period. Beard up to his feet. There's the escape. Still with a minute 42 of riding time. So if no points are scored here in the third period, it will go to sudden victory. Cardenas does have the stall call against him. Nice double off the snap from Beard. But good hips by Beard. Ooh. Looked like Cardenas was so close to the finish. And he's still working for it. Yeah, Beard did a good job of working that right arm in so Cardenas couldn't switch off to the single. Cardenas has a stall, came back out. Good circle from Cardenas. Now wouldn't that be something if Beard got a stall call one, four to three with no takedown. Yeah. But Cardenas doing a good job firing off attacks here. Cardenas definitely not stalling here in this third period. Yep. He's taking multiple attacks. Riding time locked up, 34 seconds to go. This match could come down to who's got more in the tank here. Neither wrestler looking more fatigued than the other at this point. This is a good opportunity for Cardenas. Beard trying to float it back and he does. Now he's in position. Cardenas does not have a lock. And a brick is coming out from the Cornell corner. I believe they were yelling that he was on the knee pad, but it looks like they took the brick back. And brick comes back in. So they're asking for a challenge. They singlet, want a singlet pull. Singlet pull. Uh, I didn't see it, but the Cornell corner was right there. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. We're taking a look at it now here. Independent review. Don't see it on the review. Yeah, and I'm not sure if the, the camera angle is on the opposite side, I think, of what Cornell wants. Right. And, you know, regardless of if they get this or not, I think it's a good challenge. Why not? Seven seconds to go. Second to last match of the night. And maybe gives, gives your guy a little bit of a break. If they're going into overtime, 
to talk to him for a little bit, talk over some strategy. But if you get it, it's essentially the match. Right. Yeah, I don't see any evidence of it with the replays that we're looking at on our screen. And you, you don't feel great if you're either guy going in, either fan base going into sudden victory. Cardenas came out and got the first takedown, but since it's been pretty even on the feet, Cardenas is the one taking the shots, but hasn't been able to convert mm -hmm. since that first one. Yeah, and really that one, really close to finishing. Yeah, call the mat stands. No singlet pull, so seven seconds to go here. And if you're, if you're Cardenas, Cornell's corner, really feel good about the first two minutes at neutral position. But if it goes to rideouts, that's where Beard's shown to have the advantage. And that was Cornell's last challenge, so they no longer have a brick. Yeah, they got Luis Fernandez going for either third or fourth or fifth and sixth. It's a shot from Cardenas, but he gets extended. Beard puts him on his hip. Now Cardenas has a lock. But Beard's attacking from here. Yeah, almost looking for like a butcher, trying to put Cardenas in danger. Looking to break the lock now. Cardenas in trouble here. Beard Cardenas should cross needs... face and try and break this lock. You see him trying to pry that hand in between Cardenas' face and his leg, there's the cross face. Nothing yet, Cardenas trying to hold on for a stalemate. Beard should really try and convert this before they call a stalemate. He's got that leg trapped, but not behind yet. Beard Cardenas. needs to work the lock of Cardenas. And there it there. is. And Cornell does not have a challenge. Michael Beard grits it out. Gritty win for Michael Beard. Takedown in overtime. We're gonna take a look at some of the highlights here. There you see the opening takedown for Jacob Cardenas. But really the story of the match there for Beard. That ride out, quick escape, and then guts out the win in overtime. We're gonna stay here as we get our final bout underway here at 285 pounds on the mat. Lehigh heavyweight Nathan Taylor taking on Dorian Crosby from Bucknell. Nathan Taylor, number one seed. Dorian Crosby running to the finals from the seven. Whoa, big lift! Crosby staying Woo. on his feet after the lift, but Taylor able to put him down eventually. That takes some strength there. Cornell holds a 10 point lead. A win by Taylor here won't be enough to close that gap. I think that's nine points technically now. I'm guessing the team point deducted after that match has not been factored in yet. Yeah, Cornell's coaching staff did get a team point taken away after that 197 pound final. 
Taylor working for the fall here. Looks imminent. And there it is. Dominant performance, Nathan Taylor. Four champions for Lehigh. Nathan Taylor, pin in the semis, pin in the finals, leaves no doubt here. Bonused his way through to an EIWA title. And here we see the big lift by Taylor. He's probably spent a day or two in the weight room. And here's the final seconds of that bout as he locked up the pin.